Welcome back to the Entrepreneurial Edge. I'm Chris Bishop. For show updates, follow us on Twitter at Entrep Edge or drop us an email on Entrep at abn360.com. Your feedback is always appreciated. Now, still in the studio with me, I have Charles de Toy, the CEO of the success company, the man who started out as a, as you said yourself, a bug man, a pest control pest person control, who had an right. epiphany, switched into property, and now you're a big player in the game. Everyone always says, like, you can't go wrong with bricks and mortar and location, location, you get the location right, the <laughs> money will follow. Uh, is it that simple, the property game? I, I don't think so, Chris. I think that, um, you know, my friends often come to me and say, you know, the best investment is, is property. And the reality is that it could be the worst investment that you've ever made. Because if you do buy in the wrong place or you buy at the wrong price, uh, and quite often people buy at the wrong stage of the project, they'll, they'll buy once everybody else has taken the profits out. And so they've got to pay for all those profits. <coughs> and then I think ultimately the most important thing is that a building means nothing on its own. It's got to have a tenant in it. And, and there's, a, there's a skill, not only in finding tenants, but in looking after tenants. Um, and that's what I've learned over the years. Um, it's quite an irony that my experience in the franchising business has helped me hugely in, uh, you know, in, in the property business. What I didn't tell you about earlier on was that when I was about to turn 50, um, that was quite a, a, qu quite a momentous age for me. I, I just felt that you know, I can't do pest control my whole life. I, I need to do something different, you know. So I sold my pest control business, really got involved in the property business, and then all of a sudden I found out that all the things that I was doing before in my franchise business, I still do now. So, you know, I still have a pest control team. I do my own pest control. I do my own cleaning of carpets, my own management of my buildings, etc. So th that was really, I suppose, you know, my school days for you know, knowing how to run a, a property f uh, portfolio. And what about the Great Recession of 2008, which uh, still lingers even to this day? How hard did it hit you? Chris, I have a different philosophy. I don't, I try not to um, take note of what goes on around me. Um, to me, my personal economy is a tiny drop in the ocean. So, you know, if, if the economy of the country shrinks by 10%, that doesn't mean to say that my economy needs to shrink. <laughs> so what I've tried to do, I've tried to, throughout my whole life, um, ignore what's happening in the world. And what I've been doing over the last six years, I haven't changed it. So every month, I have finished off a building. Um, and my friends and family often say to me, Shaw, you're crazy, you, you, you know, you, you're wanting to build more buildings, but look at all the empty buildings around you. Um, I, I try to ignore that because uh, all I'm working on is my own uh, little economy and the recession um, has had no effect on me. Um, my office parks are, are always uh, f virtually fully let. Uh, in fact, I don't sleep at night if, if it's not 100% <laughs> let. But I, I, I want to hasten and tell you that there is a, a, a reason for that. Um, I've learned in my life that in business, you've got to get two things right. First of all, your product must be unique. And secondly, it must be competitively priced. So I've gone out of my way to make my uh, property portfolio totally unique. For example, just a few things. We have exceptional security. In fact, before I tell you all the things, what I've really done is I've taken the challenges of doing business in Africa mm -hmm. and, and tried to find solutions for those challenges. And in the process, I've developed a, a, a product which is unique. So, for example, my security is exceptional. I have full generator backup on all my parks. Because this is quite a new thing, isn't it? I mean, a lot of um, buildings are not putting this as standard, even though here in Africa's biggest economy, yes. there have been challenges with electricity mm. and, to an extent, water. Mm. Mm. Um, uh, and when did you decide to do this? Well, when we started having problems with the supply, um, <laughs> you know, I realized that, you know, I have a lot of tenants that can't afford not to have electricity because they, they run, um, you know, facilities for other clients where they have to have power all the time. So even, you know, you mentioned water. Um, one of my parks has 1,200 people in it. 
Now you can imagine if there's no municipal water for two days and people need to go to the toilet. That is a serious <laughs> problem. Mm, sure. So, you know, I, I've now put in our own storage facilities. Um, we can run without municipal water for at least a week. Um, then we've done other things which is, I think, very unique. Um, we, we've developed an online network um, where all of our tenants are on this network and they can communicate with one another. They also communicate with me and I communicate with them. Um, I'll never forget when we first launched this thing, I always knew that I had a good relationship with my tenants. But when, when we launched this program, I suddenly realized that now my tenants would be able to tell everybody what they thought of me. So I, I, I got a bit of a panic, you know, and I thought, no, look, I, before we launch, I'm first going to make 100% sure that my tenants do like me. <laughs> so I went and visited all my tenants, and we had a chat, told them what was coming. And um, so when we, you know, went public, I, I was a little bit more relaxed. But, but what this has done is that it creates a forum where the tenants can actually interact with one another. So, f for example, if we get a new t uh, tenant coming in, immediately uh, he has a potential 120 new clients because, you know, there's tremendous networking that takes place. Um, we, we also, on this network, have a, um, all the maintenance issues are, are, are logged on, on this internal network. So I can be anywhere in the world and I can see exactly what uh, maintenance issues are outstanding. Um, so these are the kind of things I think that... Give you the edge, you think? I think so. But, do you, say, so. but you say, though, that you seem to have ridden the recession well, for the reasons why you're saying, but we've had people on this program, small business people, big business people, government ministers, all kinds of people, and they all said as one that in 2008 they thought, my gosh, what is going on? This is it, the whole game has changed. Mm -hmm. Surely you must have had that moment when you were like thinking, what's gonna happen to me? What's to become of me? No, I, don't, I, I, I didn't actually experience that, Chris. I must be very <laughs> fortunate. Maybe it's because I don't listen to the news that much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, I, you know, to me it's quite simple actually. It's about, you know what helped me a lot in, in, in my business career? I found out that money flows in certain directions. And I found out that in the master-servant relationship, money always flows to the servant. And people think it flows to the master. Mm. Um, and I found out that if money flows to the servant, then if you want to be a good businessman, you need to become the servant. And in my industry, I'm very fortunate because, uh, you know, m I'm not saying all, but a lot of landlords are quite arrogant guys, you know. And they give, they take as much as they can and give as little as possible. And it's all about the bottom line. Mm -hmm. um, so all I can say is how lucky can a man be to be in an industry, you know, where your competitors are arrogant <laughs> and they have bad relationships with their tenants. So it makes my life so much easier. Well, well let's get on to a, a, a more cheerful topic, mm -hmm. uh, shall we say. One of the loves of your life, so you say, mm -hmm. trees. I'm told this is part of your business now, something that you're promoting. Just tell us a little bit about what you're trying to do. It's, it's another one of my hobbies that has oh. got out of hand, I think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I told you in the beginning that I grew up on a farm and I, I've always had a tremendous love for nature. And trees have always fascinated me. Um, so when my daughter started going out with a young boy who uh, he has an agricultural degree um, and he was trying to you know, make a business of growing trees, I said to Barry, Barry, let's do this thing properly. And um, by properly, what I mean is at the moment, five years down the line, um, we have a, a small farm of about eight hectares, and we have over 500,000 trees. Um, we literally um, propagate the trees and grow them in five years to what we would term a 100 litre tree when it's about three metres tall and, uh, and you know, about that thick. Um, so, uh, and they're all indigenous trees. Um, the the, the uh, farm is called Willow Feather Farm. And through Willow Feather Farm, I've started a, an initiative, a greening initiative. Um, we formed a, um, a non-profit organisation called uh, Save Our Planet, Plant a Tree. 
Uh, in fact, there's a website, saveourplanet.org. Um, and I've undertaken to, to contribute or to sponsor 150,000 trees to the residents of Centurion. Um, over the next five years. It's amazing that here we are sitting in Johannesburg. Was it one of the, the greatest man-made forests on earth? I mean, I think that's something that's of which fantastic. people should be proud yeah, of here. I mean, every time I look across and I see all those trees and I just think that's where I live. Mm. But, um, and also I was reading that you've also planted one tree for every year of Nelson Mandela's life. On, on Madiba's birthday, we, we planted 94 trees that actually um, I built a new road in Highfield Techno Park because traffic was a bit, bit of a problem for my tenants. And uh, these trees are planted, you know, in the middle of the, the double road. Um, planting a tree is one thing, but you've also got to look after it, you know, you've got to water it. But uh, just to give you a little bit more insight on our green initiative, um, the, the day that I decided on 150,000 trees, over five years. Those two numbers sounded good to me, you know, and then, and then I took out the calculator and I found out that to keep to my promise, I had to plant two and a half thousand trees every month. Mm. So what I've done is uh, we work together with the schools in, in our area and um, every month we uh, go to a particular school. We do a whole project during the month all about greening and the role that trees play, etc. And then at the end of the month, we have a, a tree ceremony, and every child in the tree is given a tree. Um, but they're also given the responsibility of taking better care of Mother Earth. Our, our aim is to get 500 corporates onto this project. Mm -hmm. we, we now have 80 companies that have joined us, and um, they range from sponsoring a tree per month to 100 trees a month. Uh, we then, through the Lions Organization of South Africa, identify projects. And uh, once a month we go and plant these trees, whether it be at a school or a park. Um, so this thing has got a lot bigger than what I anticipated. Um, as I said, it was a hobby of mine. 150,000 trees, how many do you think in the end you well, might be looking at yourself? Well, you know what, I think if we propagate 100,000 trees a year, Mm. And, and that is what our end goal is, is to plant 100,000 trees a year. What a journey. I mean, you pest control to, <laughs> to uh, owning and developing property, and now tree. You could become the, the tree man of Africa. I was on a radio station the other, <laughs> the other day, and they, 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 they gave me a nickname uh, in Afrikaans. It's uh, die groen gedunte. <laughs> the green thing, <laughs> the green machine. <laughs> Um, I must tell you, it's, it's the, the one project which has given me the, the most joy um, because, you know, to talk to children and to change their outlook on life and, to, and, and when you see the attachment that they grow with the tree and the tree becomes symbolic too because what, what I say to them is that they need to build up a relationship with the tree and talk to the tree on a daily basis. And it's not just about the tree growing and reaching its full potential, but it's about them growing and reaching their full potential. Charles de Toy, uh, pest control expert, uh, property developer, and now tree, tree man. Mm -hmm. We wish you all the best of luck and many more trees to come. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure indeed. We've come to the end of another edition of the Entrepreneurial Edge. If you happen to miss part of the show, you can go to our website at www.abndigital.com and catch the show there from now. For me, Chris Bishop, it's goodbye. <laughs>